Hi, this is Sandra Peoples, and this is this tutorial is um, on ebook cover design using GIMP. G I M P. Now we're gonna get right into it, but first I want to open up a document that I created to show you how to um, this document that I created right here has a few links in it that you might need to use to uh, get images for your book cover so this uh, this title right here says creating your own Kindle ebook cover but really you can use this for any ebook and this is just a few specifications um, when choosing photos for your cover be sure that you're using royalty free photos that you have either paid for you either pay for credits to download or you're using free photos from a royalty free stock image site. Otherwise, you could be sued for not having the rights to use the photo, especially if the photo has a watermark. And on here, I've listed some stock image sites that you can go to. There's dreamstime.com, iStockphoto.com, 123rf.com, shutterstock.com us.photolia.com, bigstockphoto.com. Once you've chosen your photos, you're ready to design your cover. Now you can also use your own images, but this is just for people who don't have images to use and they have to, um, you know, go and find some on the internet. What some people do is just go to Google and type in a girl in a swimsuit and whatever pops up, they'll use that picture on their book cover. But that's that picture could be a copyrighted image is just something that pops up when people search for certain things so to protect yourself you want to make sure that the images you use come from a uh, royalty free stock image site and these are just some of them there are a lot of them out there that you can use but you just want to make sure that they're royalty free now dreams time used to have it where you could download 50 images for free um, they've changed some of their requirements but still you can download images for like nine cent and things like that and even sometimes they still have free images that you can use but still you want you will be paying for the credits on these sites and what I mean by credit like for instance I'm gonna take you over to iStock photo for a second so I can show you and I'll, I'll be right back okay so this is iStockphoto.com lots of people use iStock photo because they have very high quality images and they're also um, owned by Getty Images, which is the site that uh, a lot of a lot of journalists and uh, reporters use to get their stock images for their uh, stories that they do. Uh, right now, I'm not going to take the survey, so I'm going to say no thanks. But here's what I mean: um, they have all these photos here. You can you have to sign in or join in order to be a part of. Um, uh, I stock in order to purchase images so what you could do is you would go to photos and um, you know you can see the different kind of images that they have here they have lots of different images and what I like about getting images is they give you a free photo every week so they give free photos free um, free videos free audios free lots of things but if you want to know what I'm talking about about the credits then you can scroll down here to where it says learn more buy credits so when you click on the buy credits um, button there um, you see how much credits cost now most of the pictures that you're gonna see are only like one or two credits so you actually if you get 10 credits that would be enough to do like two or three maybe even four book covers depending on the size of the images um, I always usually purchase the 10 credits or the 30 credits option because I make lots of book covers and I use different pictures and manipulate them together so but you're gonna purchase these purchase the credits and then you'll be able to go on here and like for instance let's say you type in um, woman on the beach hit search so it shows you all these pictures of a woman on the beach now let's say we pick this one right here this is what I mean by credits 
the size of the picture like if you buy 10 credits then this size picture right here actually the small one would be big enough for to use on the ebook cover or the medium one either one of those and you see the medium one would cost you three credits the large four credits and the extra large five credits I've never seen anybody use these two sizes so I would suggest that you go with the small or the medium and that's why I said if you purchase 10 credits you would have enough to actually do two or three book covers so that was just a little something I wanted to show you about the um, images from one of the si uh, sites that I use now um, another thing that I want you to know is when we get ready to design our book cover it's going to be 1600 by 2400 pixels and I suggest that you create a folder for your book cover photos and your covers that you're going to be creating and you can save it to your desktop or just save it to your document so that you have it so I'm going to go over to GIMP and then I'll come back and, and uh, we'll get started okay so to get started with your book cover in GIMP the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go up here to file hit new and the size of our book cover is going to be 1600 by 2400 and you click OK now I'm going to drag the screen down just a tad bit here now when we get into designing our uh, cover for GIMP one of the things that you're going to want to do is have your photos now I have some photos that I'm going to use I'm going to open those up and then I'll be right back okay now with GIMP I kinda took some shortcuts because we don't have long with this video so when you get your files that you want to use you're gonna go up here to file open and you're gonna get the file that you want to use you're gonna open that file now I've opened up a file I've opened two files but here's the other one that I want to open now when you're gonna use these in your document what you want to do is once you open the other one going to go here to edit go go down to copy then you want to close this out now on the other document you're going to go to edit and paste and there's your picture then you have to go over here to floating selection you're going to right click on that and hit that first one to new layer now in this image here we're going to be doing some resizing and all that kind of stuff so um, this will probably need a more advanced tutorial but this is just like the basics um, but to resize an image in uh, GIMP you're going to click this right here and you can scale this to any size you want it to be like let's say we want it to fit in nicely over here somewhere I'm going to scale this in here and hit scale and it's going to be where you put it now GIMP has some pretty cool things that you can use in it um, over here you have all your uh, like you can take this right here the rope and you can put it on here and like let's say you want to uh, cut this person out of the picture then you would just like uh, put a dot there and just keep clicking 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 anyway you get the point you click around um, you click around until you get to um, you know where you want the person to be cut out at and then you would um, you would be you would be to where you want the person to be cut out at but like I said that's gonna I think I'm gonna have to break this up into another tutorial because GIMP is easy for me to use because I'm used to doing design work but for someone who's never touched a design program before it may be a little difficult so yeah I'm gonna make a few more videos but this is just to pretty much give you the basics but these are all the tools over here how to use GIMP and they're also um, get that off of here there's also lots of other things you can use like 
one of the main things that we're going to be using is the text tool. Now, the text tool is pretty much just lets you write on this wherever you want to write. Like, let's say, uh, wedding in paradise. That's probably spelled wrong. It is spelled wrong. P A R A D I S E. Okay. Now, of course, that's really small and we can't see it. Now, on my screen, I would have to click right here. You might have it. It might look different on your screen depending on what kind of computer you're using. But you would click to get to this tool, and um, all you do is click on it and it'll come off from behind that big box. And you can resize that by just clicking on it. And the cool thing about this is you can um, move this text around you can change the colors on it now if you want to change if you want to move the text then you just click um, click any click where you're gonna click until you get this yellow bar and when you get that yellow bar then you just move it around or you when you finish typing the text you can just double click on it over here and you'll be able to move it so you would click here to move it and then you will just it's supposed to just, yeah, and you can move this anywhere you want to on there. But that's more advanced. But like I said, so um, you can change the colors in this. Like if you want the writing to be white instead of black, you just click on it. It can You can change it white, pink, whatever color you want to. Just Well, first, if you clicked off of it, you would have to go back on it and highlight it. And then click to change the colors on it. And um, you know you can change you can change the fonts over here by clicking in this little box, and you see all these different fonts here that you can use um, along the sides there. So it's pretty much um, you can do what you want to do with the text. You just play around with the sizes, the images, and um, the sizes and the different types of fonts that you want to use. I'm not going to leave that like that. If I was doing this, you know, there's so much that you can do with GIMP. But this, I just want to give you a basic understanding of it. Um, so to get your files that you want to use, you go here to file, go down to open, and then it's going to open up a dialog box here where you can uh, go in and find the pictures that you want to use. And once you find the pictures you want to use, you click open. Now you can also open up more than one image at a time by holding down the control key and clicking uh, enter on uh, holding down the control key and clicking on the images that you want to use in your photos. Now um, once you found the images that you want to use, the easy way for me is to just click on that picture and copy it and then close it out you know like I showed you at the beginning but um, if you don't want to do all that and you're going to open up you know the images that you want to use the very easy way to do that is when you open up the pictures you can just open as layers and then that way all your pictures will open up and they'll show up as different layers over here so you won't have to copy it and close it and copy it and close it and all that stuff it'll be there already so I'm going to close out this first video and um, I'm going to do another one to show you how some of the different things you can do with manipulating the pictures in GIMP so um, just stay tuned we'll be back with part two in just a moment